Okay. Welcome. Oh, I love a full house. Uh, welcome, everybody. It is uh, June 13th, and uh, it's our council meeting evening. Um, as we have quorum, I will call the meeting to order. It is 7 p.m. Uh, we would like to acknowledge that the city of Maple Ridge carried out its business on the traditional and unceded territory of the Katesi First Nation, as well as the Kwantlen First Nation. Uh, Mr. Havlick Windsor, would you uh, care to introduce procedures, please? Thank you, sir. So this meeting is being live streamed and recorded and will be available to the public for playback on our website in accordance with Council Policy 3.12. The purpose of a council meeting is to enact powers given to council using bylaws or resolutions and is the venue for debate of issues before voting on a bylaw or resolution. This meeting is being conducted through the city's one meeting platform. However, for tonight's meeting, we are still using voting cards. Red means against, green means for, Yellow is a point of order. If you wish to be put on the speakers list for a question period later on tonight, if you're going through the uh, one portal platform, please click on the microphone icon. And if you're in the audience, then just uh, make sure the mayor is aware that you would like to be put on the speakers list. And uh, once you're at the podium, please state your name and your city of residence so we could have that in our records. Thank you. Uh, before we uh, start with the meeting, I just want to introduce some good news. Uh, yesterday, we learned the recipients of the 2023 BC Heritage Awards, and I'm thrilled to share the great news that there are two local winners for this year's awards. These provincial awards, like the City of Maple Ridge's Heritage Awards, coordinated by the Community Heritage Foundation, Foundation honors individuals and organizations who preserve and promote our heritage and history. So I'd like to congratulate Leanne Cohen and James Rowley, who received the Conservation Award in the prestigious Outstanding Category for their work on the Hammond Forever Home, which demonstrated an innovative combination of heritage conservation and environmental leadership. At this year's Maple Ridge Heritage Awards, they were the winners of the Heritage Site Award. So this is really exciting because we recognize them, and now they're being recognized by the province. As well, the second uh, winner is the Maple Ridge Museum, received a recognition award in the Education Awareness and Communications category for their programming of Museum on the Move. In 2022, the program made 18 appearances around the city and brought heritage alive in a new and exciting way. On behalf of Council, thank you for what you're doing to shine a spotlight on our local heritage and conservation and through that work, receiving provincial recognition for our city. Congratulations. Good news. Glad to hear. Being recognized. Yay. Okay. Um, so moving on, uh, are there any amendments to the agenda? Seeing no amendments, um, uh, can I get a motion to approve the agenda? Moved by Ca uh, Councillor Carrera, seconded by Councillor Schiller. All those in favor? It is unanimous. Uh, motion has been adopted. Uh, can I get an adoption of the minutes for the regular council meeting of May 23rd and the special council to close on May 30th? Uh, moved by Councilor Carrera, seconded by Councilor Youssef. All those in favor? Motion is carried. It's unanimous. Thank you very much. We're going to move on to item six. Mr. Havlick Windsor, can you introduce our next item? Thank you, sir. The next item on tonight's agenda is a delegation. We have Ms. Hélène. Marku, who's going to be uh, presenting on the UBC Malcolm Knapp Forest. Thank you very much. And you have how many minutes? <laughs> you have 10 minutes. Is there going to be a minutes. timer for me somewhere? That would be really helpful. We will keep I'll, I'll do this. Yeah. time. I'll do this. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> you have about 10 minutes and we'll let you know when you're getting Okay, thank you. thank you. It should be good. Um, Thank you for hosting me. My name is Hélène Marcou, and I'm the manager of the UBC Malcolm Knapp Research Forest. I'm curious to know who's been to the research forest before, because there's a lot of Maple Ridge residents that say, I've never been there before. Um, and I do also want to acknowledge that we are the traditional territory of a number of nations, including Katsi and the Kwatlin, but um, 
We have a woodlot license that is also in the traditional territory of the Tawasin and the Matsqui First Nations. So UBC, of course, is in Vancouver, the main campus, but we actually have two research forests. And one of them is when, in Williams Lake, and that one is on Crown Land. Um, and the Malcolm Knapp Research Forest is just over 5,000 hectares in size, and that one is on private land. I'm going to give you guys a little bit of res um, history about it as well as we go along. But as you, of course, go into the Pit Polder area, or you're driving over the Pit River Bridge and you're looking at the Golden Ears, well, everything in the foreground is the Malcolm Knapp Research Forest. Um, our boundary goes all the way up to the subalpine of the Golden Ears, not all the Golden Ears, but that first stretch of mountains on your left. And of course, if you drive up to Silver Valley neighborhood, um, we're really adjacent to this growing community in the wildland urban interface. And so you drive up 232nd and hang a right, and then you eventually get to the entrance of the research forest. Our mandate is research, education, and sustainable forest management. And we operate under the Dean of the Faculty of Forestry as an autonomous department. We're self-funded through four different business streams with over 5 million annually in revenue, along with there's at any point in time, 50 to 70 people making their livelihood in that forest. Um, the four primary business or revenue streams are Loon Lake Lodge and Retreat Center, which is in the forest, uh, Gallant Enterprises, um, which is a sawmill, uh, our program, Wild and Immersive, which actually just was a recipient of the uh, Heritage Award this year as well. And the fourth revenue stream is logging and log sales. The research forest, really, the forest itself was shaped by extensive logging in the 1920s, um, along with two major fire events in 1868 and 1931. So the east side of the research forest in 1931, there was a massive fire that basically post logging um, changed that fire, uh, that forest. And the forest itself was given by the province to UBC in 1949 as a crown grant. Prior to that, it was kind of an initial little trial and error kind of situation in 1943. But in 1949, it was this crown grant that was initiated by Professor Malcolm Knapp. Loon Lake was constructed in 1948 and then upgraded in 2004, starting in 2004, with a partnership with the Canadian Cancer Society. We also have a woodlot license, which is a crown tenure of forests. So in that map on the right, you can see where Loon Lake is located, where the sawmill is located. But that sliver on, that green sliver on the west side of the forest, that's the woodlot. I guess I have a laser pointer. Anyways, I know it doesn't work. Okay. So Loon Lake, um, it, just to show you a bit of the transformation, when in the, the old photos here, that's the original camp. And we've, through many upgrades and funding that's come through donors, we've, we've really renewed that space. And it's now a year-round facility. Just a few quick facts about the forest. So again, it's just over 5,000 hectares. And if you don't speak the language of hectares, it's over 12,000 acres. Um, which is about 12 kilometers from north to south and three to four kilometers from east to west. We have forests spanning anywhere from zero to five years of age, um, several watersheds, over 18 or 18 lakes and, and many streams. There's over 200 wildlife that have been documented, uh, 15 kilometers of hiking trails, and to date over a thousand research studies have taken place. And some of those are some of the oldest in North America when it comes to forestry research. A little bit about these two businesses. So these are joint business ventures. Um, for Loon Lake, there's over 25,000 guests annually that, that go through that facility. It's got over 25 employees. It's primarily group rentals, so it's not individual night stays, but groups like lots of UBC groups, not just forestry, but post-secondary, other institutions, uh, kindergarten, grade 12 groups, uh, church groups, corporate groups, all sorts of interest groups, yoga retreats. We also, in the summer, there's a five-week period that's exclusively for the Canadian Cancer Society, and that's Camp Good Times. It's a kids' oncology camp. Uh, the sawmill is a value-added business, so 10 to 15% of the logs that we harvest 
are manufactured into timber and other products, value-added products through that sawmill, and it employs eight to 12 people. And then Wild and Immersive, this is a new um, undertaking since 2019, but has really flourished. And this is year-round outdoor education, primarily targeting children. We also have a preschool. Uh, over 15,000 users to date. Um, this summer, for example, we'll have 15 summer camps through July and August. And in the past year, we've established a partnership with the Finley family and a, a bursary now for other families that need to have support for registration fees or access to, you know, like muddy buddies and things that little kids need in, in the rain. Uh, we also partnered with the uh, Maple Ridge Museum this year and hosted a uh, past and present day out where we were exhibiting or showing some, of, showcasing some of the history. In terms of forest management, if you walk through the forest, you will see har evidence of harvesting. Um, on the top left is an example of some steep slope logging that was paired with a research from a postdoctoral um, a fellow from University of British Columbia. Uh, on the bottom left is an example of some of the thinning treatments that we do. On the top right is a view from one of our lakes, Marion Lake, and you can see the logging on the ground on the bottom right, and that's an example of variable retention harvesting where you leave a subset of the trees out there. So one of our big purposes has always been to host experiential learning and we host six to seven field schools and we've just been requested to host another three. So these are UBC credited programs and the students do an intensive like five to seven day stay with us, lots of applied learning in the field. And if you drive up to the forest now, it looks like this. It's like a back, back to the future, no. Sorry, not whatever the reverse is. Back to the past. <laughs> it's very old infrastructure. We have an office, a caretaker home, parking, that sort of thing. Um, and you, there's a little glimpse of the golden years. But what our vision is that we're working on, um, and we have great support from our dean from the Faculty of Forestry, is a renewable. Or, sorry, a renewal of that space and and the establishment of facility that's more outreaching to the community. So this is uh, just a draft rendition of the Welcome and Education Center that we're hoping to pursue. And this facility would be a 10,000 square foot space that has a self-guided exhibit, an interpretive kind of interactive space to learn about the place open to the public, as well as a multi-purpose event room or classroom with an adjacent kitchen covered deck new parking lot or a relocation of the parking lot to improve safety and crossing of the main road, as well as enhanced site services. So we currently don't have any potable water or proper sanitary at the site. The water is a 300 foot well with arsenic laced beverages. It's lovely. At any rate, this is just a rendition of what this proposed um, project will look like. And really here we are at the edge of this growing community um, where the urban interface wildfire concerns are of course a growing issue and, and we're really interested in uh, within this development to consider fire smart community planning. Um, on the top right is part of my team and our annual fire training. Everyone gets trained for wildland fire, um, uh, uh, being, we have a suite of equipment, um, pumps, hoses, and we monitor all our fire ponds. And we also have um, patrolling in the summer to talk to the public that come in and that sort of thing. Uh, we're looking to really increase opportunities for community members to come and, and participate and be learn in the forest um, by enhancing learning and recreational opportunities like Wild and Immersive. Um, and also improving facilities for the use of post-secondary and finding more ways of bringing UBC out to Maple Ridge. And I'm trying to move to the next slide and it's not happening. So I Maybe it's not there. Did I get cut off? <laughs> oh, here it is. Um, so uh, thanks for allowing me to come talk to you. And I guess I, I did have a request and that is to nominate someone from council that could join our community advisory board. So prior to COVID, we had a board um, and it fizzled away and I'm trying to revive that at the moment. 
So the board meets two to three times a year. It has other local folks, um, community groups, members at large. Uh, we meet in the evenings, dinner, drinks are served, and we always have one annual field tour where we take you out to some of the current operations and research projects. Uh, we usually, we do that in June when it's nice out. At any rate, that is my request. I don't know how that works. If you nominate on the spot or if I get to hand pick. Uh, no. <laughs> but that's all I had. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, may I say you were exactly 10 minutes. Oh, wow. <laughs> so kudos to you. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, as much as I thought about what I knew about uh, Malcolm uh, Nat Forrest, uh, I don't know anything about it now. Uh, very interesting to see all the exciting things going on, especially the new development, uh, the potential development for there. There's tremendous opportunity. Uh, so Thank you for being here. I will open it up for any comments or questions. Uh, Councillor Dewitt, please, followed by Councillor Youssef. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you for the presentation. It was really great overview. I have been up there before, but I really encourage perhaps we could do a uh, organized tour of councils rather than individuals. I would really think that's a great idea because you do amazing work up there uh, and it's it's really good for all of us to go on a tour and and then uh, we'll leave it to the mayor to decide who gets to be the the, the lucky one to be on the board. Me, me. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you should totally come up. It's it's best to see on the ground. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Youssef. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And thank you very much for the presentation. It's good to see you again. And uh, yeah, I uh, have been to uh, the forest and toured uh, with yourself and, and got to see a little bit on the ground of the operations up there and strongly recommend that other members of council, if, if, yeah, if there is the ability for all of us to go, uh, that would be great. If uh, if not, then I encourage you individually to uh, reach out and, and do go out there and tour. It's, it's quite a fascinating facility and it was very educational when I was there. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Tan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you for the presentation. I love hearing about the forest. Um, I'm curious about the timeline for this project. What are your thoughts? Yeah, the timeline for the project. So we actually had another meeting today with the engineering department. So one of the big, I guess, essential components here is the site servicing, uh, meaning sanitary and water. So we've been working on that one for over a year now. And yeah, we I think we had, we're making good progress with the engineering department. Um, through UBC is a big beast, and um, there I probably shouldn't have said that on live recording, but <laughs> there are processes and um, it's contingent on funding. So we are launching a fundraising campaign at the moment. Uh, Loon Lake, I should point out that development, really the partnership with the King Cancer Studies, what kids started the funding seed money to get the redevelopment up there, and that was over 15 years and it was like a $20 million investment of which 13 million was fundraised. And today it would be like, you know, 70 million or something worth of development. Um, what we're hoping for, and I don't know what I'm looking at more of like a, you know, maybe at, ma at most two years to break ground. So we're hoping that's what's gonna happen, but we'll see. Crossing my fingers with you. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. Seeing no other questions or comments. Uh, Maybe can I just add that it's the project has now landed on a top whatever list that UBC has of pro priority projects. So I think it's got a lot of traction and yeah. Excellent. Thank you again for um, Thanks. Uh, sharing your presentation with us. Yeah, come to the forest. <laughs> <laughs> Normally I'd be afraid when somebody tells me that, come to the forest, <laughs> but I think we'd be safe there. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. Um, we're going to move on to uh, item seven, Mr. Havoc Windsor, the next uh, item on the agenda, please. Thank you, sir. The next item is the consent agenda. So we have a number of items. We have the um, development agreements committee minutes from May 18th and May 31st, 2023. We have the agricultural advisory committee minutes from June 23, July 5, September 29, February 16th. We have the Metro Vancouver correspondence from May 16, 2023. City of Richmond correspondence from May 25, 2023, the Mayor's Task Force on Climate Action Committee appointments, and uh, that's Dr. Elson Shaw, Kirk Grayson, Alexandra Tudos, 
and the 2024 BC Summer Games Board of Directors appointments, which consist of uh, Karen Redwich, Cheryl Nex, Trish Spencer Fell, Brian Krieger, Peter Malakuan, Heidi Einhorn, Jake Rudolph, Richard Iskander, and Matt Shear. And Terrence Stevenson. Thank you. Okay, can I get a motion to move the consent agenda, please? Moved by Councillor Schiller, seconded by Councillor uh, Carreras. Uh, any comments or questions or discussions? Councillor Schiller. Thank you, Mary Me. I just wanted to take this opportunity to share how excited I am uh, to have the appointments made to the Mayor's Task Force on Climate Action. There's some amazing uh, people who've agreed to participate on the task force, and we're currently hiring a staff position to support the, the work. Uh, from my perspective, this is a really significant uh, moment for the city in moving forward on climate action. And I thank everyone who's been involved so far, and I look forward to being part of the work. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Any other further comments or questions? Seeing none, I will call the question. All those in favor? It is unanimous. My motion has been carried. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Havlick Windsor, what's next on our agenda? Thank you, sir. The next item is 9.1, and this is the uh, this is application 2018449RZ pertaining to 21745 River, River Road, and it's to rezone the subject property from RS1 to RS1B, allowing the feature construction or subdivision of two lots. Okay, there's no... There is no presentation. Okay, good. Can I get a motion to move this, please? Moved by Councillor Duick, seconded by Councillor Schiller. Any comments or questions? Seeing none, I will call the question. All those in favor? Uh, all those opposed? Sorry, I can't see Councillor Yusuf. Did you need a moment? Okay. You're good? Okay, great. Uh, so uh, motion is uh, unanimously adopted. Thank you very much. Uh, and we're moving on to item 10, Mr. Havlick Windsor. Thank you, sir. The next item, 10.1, is uh, application 2023064AL and it pertains to 27098 108th Avenue. It's a non adhering residential use in the agricultural land reserve, and it is here to be considered uh, to be forwarded to the Agricultural Land Commission for their review and consideration. Presentations. Okay. Can I get a motion to move this, please? Uh, moved by Councillor Yusuf, seconded by Councillor Schiller. Any comments or questions on this item? Seeing none, I will call the question. All those in favor? It is unanimous. Motion has been adopted. Uh, moving on, Mr. Havlick Windsor. Thank you, sir. The next item, 10.2, pertains to application 20230590RZ, and it's to rezone the property at 283049096 96th Avenue from RS3 and P4 to RS3 to allow the change of use of the existing building from a place of worship to a single family dwelling. Thank you very much. Can I get a motion to move this item? Moved by Councillor Duick, seconded by Councillor Youssef. Comments, questions? Seeing none, I will call the question. All those in favor? And it is unanimous. Motion has been carried. Thank you very much. Moving on to Mr. havlick sir. Thank you, sir. The next item, 10.3, pertains to application 2019-393-RZ, and it's to rezone the property at 20786 River Road. Um, from RS1 and RT2 to permit the future consideration of a six separately detached dwelling units forming a courtyard housing complex. Thank you very much. Can I get a motion to move this, please? Moved by Councillor Yusuf, seconded by Councillor Schiller. Uh, any comments or questions? I'll open it up. Uh, Councillor uh, uh, Yusuf, followed by Councillor Carreras, followed by Councillor Schiller. And followed by Councillor Duick. We'll get you all in there. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I will not be supporting this going forward. Uh, I don't see this as fitting into the neighborhood in, in such a way that's conducive to proceeding at this point. Um, having served on the previous council and sent this back 
because of the density that was already there and then having it now come back with six units uh, still a bit too much uh, as I had pondered with Committee of the Whole, if the school district would be interested in uh, possibly purchasing a portion, if not all of the property, I think it would be of good use to the school as uh, there's certainly a demand for more school space and, and this fits in better in that direction. And that's uh, to uh, the school district to decide whether or not they would have any interest in that. And uh, uh, I, again, uh, with the uh, Fraser River Escarpment Review as well, I don't want to move this forward any further than it already has. And while I have the floor, Mr. Chair, through you to staff, are we withholding applications of this density after second reading? Is that what I understood? And until the review is complete? Through the chair, no, we are not. We're proceeding and we're basically not issuing building permits until that review is completed, but we allow them to proceed through the process. Thank you. Thank you for that clarification. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Those are my comments. Thank you. Uh, moving over to Councillor Schiller. Thank you, Mayor Rumi. I will not be supporting uh, this proposal. Um, I don't think it's a fit for this specific site. And I do really support this idea of, of courtyard development. I think it really does provide something that is missing in terms of housing provision, but it, to me, it is very site specific. I understand why River Road is considered, uh, you know, a major corridor, but the reality is it's, it's very narrow and constrained, and I just don't see that it has the same ability to absorb increased traffic that um, other corridors do. The fact that it's right beside an elementary school um, is, is just a concern for me to add, uh, you know, vehicles uh, right adjacent to an elementary school like that. And with the density that's being proposed and the, and the height variances, I, I just don't feel it's a fit. Um, and I, I think that that echoes feedback that was already provided um, and and I think is being upheld here. So I won't be supporting this. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Carreras. Thank you very much. Um, so I, I'm also not supporting this development. And and I, I do I do want to preface it with like I, I agree with infill I believe in infill it's our way forward, and like my colleague Councillor Schiller said this one is very site specific and we have approved infill up to four in various areas where it's made sense along River Road. This one is a you know a challenge to me, um, and and a lot of it is echoing. I did watch the debate from the last council, and I heard what the the concerns were and the. It, and the instructions or the debate back. And I and I feel like this one hasn't come back taking that seriously. And although this is a new council, I still share many of those concerns. Um, I still believe that six is too many for this specific site. And, and again, it's right next to an elementary school, which is great because this elementary school is one of the few that actually has space in our, in our district. But it's a very busy area of the road. People have just come on from 207. The school's right there. Um, the height, I think, is out of out of context with the area. We have improved infill in other areas, but not to this height variation that I, that I recall. Um, and um, I just, I, I just, for me, and and it's the it's the space that it's in and. And I know we have this push pull with parking all the time too. The reality is, is we do need to make sure there is some parking and there's zero parking around there. It's a very chaotic area. And, you know, I, I would be open to something coming back that maybe was a much lower number of, uh, but I think, I think this is one that just needs to go back to the drawing board and come back to us. So I won't be supporting this one. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Duick. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well, as somebody that was on the previous council, uh, it's been referenced already, but I think this is probably the most important piece because had I known my comments and my fellow colleagues, which every one of us were opposed to the application, so it's not like it was a close call, every councillor and the mayor were opposed to the previous application. So that's important. We were told though, the best thing to do would be to refer it back to staff and give the applicant the opportunity to revise the plan 
so that they didn't have to start from ground zero. So out of respect for that, that's what we did. But in hindsight, I wish I would have just out and out turned it down because obviously there was no recognition of the comments around the council table. The applicant's representative mentioned at Committee of the Whole that council didn't direct staff or tell staff what to do with, with the numbers. And that is not true. Although the motion didn't say it specifically, staff did say all of our comments would be taken into consideration and, would, and the applicant would have heard those comments. I do know that, you know that it changed hands, but at the same time, you need to do your due diligence. For me as an elected representative that typically does not vote against projects, and I do believe in infill, I do believe in, in density and all of that, the courtyard housing has, is one that has been a challenge for us. I have several examples where we weren't able to vote for them because of the form and character. I drove down River Road today again, just you know, refresh my memory. And when I look at some of the projects, they fit. They were on the corner, they have you know, two, two frontages, not one, not panhandle beside, and a school beside, and busy with traffic and everything. So there's a number of reasons why I can't uh, support this project. I think for me, it really does talk about respecting the neighbors, the neighborhood and the form and character. So for those reasons, I am not going to support this. I, I think the applicant really needs to pay attention to what not only the previous council said, but what council is saying here is it needs to consider the neighborhood, the traffic, the parking, the trees around, the, the fact that you have a panhandle lot, which is the other thing not related to this is, you know, I think we seriously need to have that conversation about River Road and panhandle lots and what that looks for, looks for the for, uh, future presentations or applications, because it is different when you have a panhandle lot. And we have, I think 22 or something like that along River Road, don't quote me exactly, but a number of panhandle lots along River Road. So I'm not going to support it. And as I said, I wish I had turned it down in hindsight now, given the lack of consideration and respect for the previous council's comments. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Hey, Councillor Doze, did you have a comment? Oh, here we go. Can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Hey, you were just fooling with us. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Thank very, you much, very much, Your Worship. I like, like I'm having, having, having an echo here. here. But, uh, but uh, whatever, whatever happens, happens, I just want, I just to, want to lend my, lend my voice to this particular, this particular issue. issue. To the, to the fact, fact that, that uh, I, personally I personally drove down, down, down to that place, place to look, to look at, at it. And, and uh, ordinarily, ordinarily I, I, I will I will never, never turn down, down any application, application to, to build, build a, a house, house that will accommodate, that will accommodate people, people in the village. But, uh, but uh, I, feel I feel very sad, sad that, that I will say no, say no to, this. to this for the for various, various reasons, reasons expressed, expressed by, by my uh, colleagues, colleagues here. here. I, I, I think that uh, uh, one of the things we need to put in place will be the ability of the applicants to be able to review in greater details whatever input council is making or putting into a, an application of this nature because um, if the uh, applicant had paid attention and just like it was said that the property changed hand over time, but if the applicant had paid attention to what was said and the uh, comments that were made previously on this, I don't think we'll be where we are now. And uh, make no mistake, this council is very, very willing and ready to approve anything and everything that is good to Maple Ridge as far as housing is concerned. Unfortunately, this doesn't meet that parameter. So for these reasons uh, that was expressed by my predecessors and I mean by my uh, colleagues here, and uh, the fact that I've been there again the second time to have a second look at it, I think I will say no on this one. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Chan. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, when I read the, you know, I spent 
I spent an, a morning down in the neighborhood and I went down to the property and had a chat with um, some homeowners who were kind enough to show me around, show me the property, you know, show me just trees that were close to your lot, you know, express their concerns about, you know, folks have been here for 20 years, some of us, 5, 10, 20, proud enough to call this neighborhood home, you know, and what, a, and and then I heard something and I heard something in their voices and I heard something, I saw a lot of things in the emails that we've gotten, the concerns that we've had, that is deep rooted fear that our neighborhood is changing, that we signed on for 20 years, that we wanted to live in this special place that we call Maple Ridge and particularly the Hammond neighborhood, so close to an outdoor pool, so close to Hammond Stadium where our kids could go and play baseball. And so cl close to the neighborhood and one uh, in the elementary school and what a special place that is. Um, and I want to share something with you. When I was 11, we moved to Canada. We stayed in Burnaby in a basement suite. And then because of house prices, we ended up having to move to Southeast Vancouver. That was when I was in grade seven. Grade nine, I moved to Burnaby because our family couldn't afford it there. At that point, I learned how to spend an hour on the bus each way. And after that, I went to Coquitlam and I was spending an hour and a half on the bus each way. And there's nothing sadder than a great 10 student who spends her evenings when in training at Braid Station with a math textbook because we didn't have cell phones that day. You know, and I think about we finally found a home in Maple Ridge and what a special place it is to call home. And so when I see this place and I think about the stress and anxiety of all the neighbors for the safety of their children in traffic. And the thing we also know is that there's 7,500 trips on this on River Road and it is an arterial road. And the folks, the cars driving on this road and not necessarily only the houses, it is everyone east of Maple Ridge because of many homes were built. And for 30 years, we have underfunded investment and road investment and transportation in this city. And this is what we have come to when neighbors feel like they fill city hall to make sure that fundamentally is the deep rooted fear that the neighborhood doesn't change. And the reality is that our neighborhoods are changing. In neighborhoods across the lower mainland, when there are not no new, there are no new houses, homes that our young people and people families now can afford, our neighborhoods change. Our neighborhoods are already changing. We can do nothing in our neighborhoods change. That elementary schools start drying up and we start seeing the little, stop seeing little children in our neighborhoods and no one goes to Hammond and fewer people go to Hammond outdoor pool. Our neighborhoods are changing. If we turn down this application, our neighborhood changes. If we, if, if we, what do they say? The only thing that's constant is death and taxes. And so what we, when I hear about traffic safety, what I hear is not that is that we need to fundamentally rethink the transportation network in the city. And that is what we are doing. It is slow, it is incredibly slow and frustrating work, but it is happening. We need better rapid transit in this community that takes people out of their cars and gives them an option to stay in, to not put so many cars on the road. And that is what will fundamentally help the safety of children and of traffic in this community. It is, and so when I look at this and I think, Mike, in my, the neighborhood that I get to live in now, I don't live far from this, from this neighborhood. Sometimes I go down there on my evening walks. In my the street that I live in now, it used to be a food locker. It used to be green space. Now it's single family homes. And I do have people actually looking down at me in the backyard from their patios. And soon, and it is zoned for multifamily. My neighborhood is changing. And so when I hear that we cannot have our neighborhood change, I ask, our neighborhoods constant change. Our neighborhoods are in flux and that time and land changes all the time. So when I hear the neighborhood can't change because of height, I'm thinking of the six units. It's not six units of houses. I don't fundamentally care whether the developer makes money. That is not my problem. But what I do care is the, is the families who talk to me. I talked to one recently, a, city, a member of the cloud community who moved away from Alberta with three kids, now rents in a place in Wana and says, Given where it's going now, I can't afford to move here. I think we'll move back to Alberta. And so I'm when we, I'm hearing my colleagues turning down and voting no against six units of housing. And look, it is very hard to vote yes for something when you have almost half a council chamber for people staring at you, who will glare, at, who will glare at you when you vote no, vote for something that they disagree. By the end of the day. When I look at these, I'm choosing not six units of housing. And I'm not helping a developer make money. I'm thinking about six families who get to call this blessed place home, whose kids get to go to elementary school, whose kids get to go to Hammond Park, get to play in Hammond Park. And I am so proud 
that we are doing the hard work on this council to make this traffic situation better, not by saying no to one housing development there and one housing development here, but instead fundamentally changing the system of our city. And that is the hard work that we need to do. And we need all of your support to get there. It is not going to be easy. And it's going to be very, very hard. And it's going to be very slow. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm happy to vote in support of this application. Thank you very much uh, for your heartfelt comments. Um, I guess I'll put my comments on the record too. Uh, what Councillor Tan um, presents to us is the real challenge that we have. Uh, we're a community that is short on housing. We're a community that in the next decade will likely see 20 to 30,000 more residents coming into our community. We're faced with how do we densify we're faced with uh, questions of transportation, rightfully so. We're faced with too many cars on the road. These are real challenges, and it's up to us to try to figure it out. Um, I've struggled with this one um, because we're a council that said we want to build housing. We want to grow our housing. Um, we need to build housing for people, uh, whether it's affordable, uh, making sure that there's uh, room for people to rent. Um, this one is, is a little bit different because it did come to council previously. And that's my challenge. When somebody comes to council and they present and we debate as the previous council did, uh, they were sent back with some very clear instructions. And they chose to ignore that. Um, the the it's hard because we're going to be saying you know we might whatever the vote is we're making a decision today on one project the as we move forward there is further development on river road we know that we have the applications they have gone through there is going to be some development on on river road uh and we know that some of the challenges are, that we're faced with is is transportation. Uh, it's a collector road. So, so there's a lot of issues going on with that. But coming back to this one, my biggest issue is the developer should have rethought what they were trying to do. And uh, they just, they missed the mark. They didn't listen to their community that they were at the public hearings. Uh, they didn't listen to the previous council. Um, and that puts us in a, in a hard place as council because there's not one of us here that doesn't want to build housing. So um, I'll, I'll, I'll stop there. Uh, is there any further comments from council before I call the question? Seeing none, I will call the question. All those in favor? All those opposed? Motion has been defeated. Um, thank you very much for your, your comments though. I appreciate it. Uh, we're gonna move on to the next item, Mr. Uh, Havlick Windsor. Thank you, sir. Next item 10.4 pertains to application 2018-349 DVP. And this is to reduce the minimum lot width for both lots for the subject mm -hmm. property at 21745 River Road. Um, there were 11 notices mailed out in relation to this item and zero pieces of correspondence were received in opposition or support. Thank you very much. Can I get a motion to move this item? Moved by Councilor Yusuf, seconded by Councilor Carreras. Any comments, questions? Seeing none, I will call the question. All those in favor? Motion uh, is unanimous. It is carried. Uh, moving on uh, to the next item. Mr. Havlick Winter. Thank you, sir. The next item, 10.5, pertains to a contract award for the 2023 Pavement Rehabilitation Program Phase 2. This item is to award the contract to Lafarge Canada Inc. in the amount of $1,394,878,090 plus applicable taxes and that a contingency be approved up to $209,831.84 excluding taxes. Thank you. Uh, can I get a motion to move this item? Moved by Councillor Yusuf, seconded by Councillor Schiller. Uh, comments, questions? Seeing none, 
I will call the question. All those in favor? It is unanimous. Motion has been carried. Uh, no staff reports, no other matters deemed expedient. So we open up to public question period. Mr. Havlick Windsor. Thank you, sir. The uh, process for the public question period, as, as we've alluded to at the beginning, is if you wish to be put on the speakers list, if you're at home, please click on the uh, microphone icon in the one meeting portal. If you're in chambers, please step up to the podium, state your name and your city of residence. And you have two minutes two and minutes. it's a total of 15 minutes for a question period. Uh, Mr. Ranta. Hi, I was really happy to receive uh, something in the mailbox today. Sorry, can you just state your name and your residence, please? Oh, Steve Ranta, Maple Ridge. It's not in the bylaw, by the way, but I'll do that out of courtesy, mayor and council. Two things on here. First two things on the strategy, livable community, climate leadership and environmental stewardship. Good, that's what I voted for. That's what I'm expecting council to do. Next, I see Friday's paper and I'm puzzled. The mayor says he wants Maple Ridge to be on the next list of 10 municipalities the province targets as needing to increase its rate of population growth. My understanding is that includes a possible share of $4.2 billion, but that's peanuts. You can't get a hospital or bridge for $4.2 billion even. And requirement to meet a population target on pain of taking over some of council's powers including the same powers that citizens saw exercised tonight by council in discussing the pros and cons of a development which would have increased the population. The article also says that the mayor hopes the province helps with funding interest infrastructure for thousands of new residents and their vehicles. The mayor's statements in the article have the potential to undermine the city's first two strategic goals and reduce the powers we elected council to exercise as our representatives. My question to council is, how long did council deliberate regarding Maple Ridge's request in public to the province to be on the province's next list of 10 targeted municipalities. Thank you for your question. It's a part of a larger conversation that I had with uh, the minister. They talked about the program. Uh, we discussed it at the housing summit just before that. The list that they referred to was uh, later, it was for 10 cities. And then later on, they expanded the potential list to about 47 municipalities, although they're starting off with the first 10. Municipalities are the creatures of the province. So if they choose to, they can, well, they can enact almost whatever they like to. However, we choose collaboration. We choose that if there is a funding to be had, that we want to work with the province, we want to work with the federal government to help us reach our targets. As the first cities that come online, we have no idea what their targets are going to be, whether they're realistic or not. What we do know is that growth is coming to Maple Ridge, and we will take whatever help that we can do. We will collaborate with all levels of government to be able to access the funds necessary to move the city forward. Thank you. I would like to see if anybody else can so, answer the uh, question Ranta, as the mayor hasn't. So you have two minutes. That is three minutes and 20 seconds. Is there anybody else much. going to ask a question? That's not the way this works, sir. Is there anybody else going to ask a question? That's well, that's up to them if they want to come up to the podium. Your time is up, sir. Thank hey, you very it's much. It's my time again. No, sir. It is. Sit down. According to the bylaw, if there's no other questions, point a of person order. can ask a second question and you please. better read the point of order in the bylaw please, if you're going to be sure sir mr ranta council does not answer questions at public question period the mayor speaks on behalf of council the mayor is not able to answer that's questions. not true either i got a email from the executive officer sir, your saying time that the bylaw up. your time that is says up. that council can respond is in effect Mr. It's Ranta, incorrect to I'm say that council could not answer. I'm asking you one more time. 
to please take a seat. I would like you to follow the bylaw, and I'd like to ask my second question because that's please what the bylaw take says. A seat, sir. I won't. We. The bylaw says you can ask a second question. If you're a bylaw officer, I want you to look up the bylaw on public question sir, period. If if you're you not call going the RCMP. to, we I'm going according to the bylaws. You are not, sir. Do you even know if anybody wants to come up again? I'm asking you I to will sit down. down. This is if the last time. If anybody wants to come up, I will let them. And if there's still time in the 15 minute period, the bylaw says you can ask a second question and anybody. Yes, on and there's other people ask. here. Now I'm asking you to sit down. Your time is already at five minutes. So please sit down. Please sit down. Thank you very much, sir. You should read okay. the bylaw. This is a... I'm not leaving. I'm waiting for my second question. And you should look up the bylaw. <laughs> okay. Uh, is there anybody else who would like to uh, come up? and uh, ask uh, questions or speak any comments please sit down sir do not try to intimidate people in this chambers i'm asking according to the bylaw folks have not been given a chance okay so i'm asking you to sit down and when i call round two you are welcome to come okay. up okay we will not have that kind of behavior in this chamber sir we will maintain we will maintain decorum here the we will maintain our decorum. How can they me when okay. Uh, lots of folks here. Anybody want to step up and uh, uh, share a comment or concern or question? Thank you very much, sir. I'm not as tall as him. I got to bend this down. I just wanted to. Thank you, guys. You do a wonderful job, and I appreciate your work, and it's a hard job to do. That's my question. Sorry, sir. Uh, for the record, your name and your residence. Tom Wallace, and I live at, and you spell my last name, W-A-L-L-I-S, and I live at 21442 River Road. And that's Maple Ridge. Thank you. <laughs> I would hope so. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, anybody else for the uh, first round? Seeing none, we will now open a call for the second round. Oh. <laughs> you, you certainly can leave. You certainly can leave. Thank you very much. I would uh, like to ask whether anybody on council can tell me how long council deliberated whether Maple Ridge should take the position that it wants to be on the list of 10 targeted communities, which might have to give up some of councilors' powers to make even the discussions that were done tonight. If the province decides that Maple Ridge is not meeting its targets and it's on the list of 10, which the mayor requested us to be on, this might not have happened. They might have forced Maple Ridge to go with the high density development, and there could have been no consideration of the neighborhood, of transportation, of culture. And I'd like to ask if anybody on council can tell me how long council deliberated whether Maple Ridge should ask to be on the targeted list of 10 communities, which might have to give up some of their powers. So. The way it works, I get to answer that question. You don't get to ask individual questions here. I'm going to say, that, say this one more time. When in the news media, they talk about 10 cities, it's not a nice or naughty list. What it is, are, are they're focused their energies on, on cities that are trying to densify. So they're offering their help to help them get there. And then there's some cities that are not working on densifying so they're going to work with those cities do we know what this program looks like no we don't do we know that we need to densify absolutely so it's important for us to show that we are ready to work with the province you, we already know that the province is coming down with their own legislation that can override certain aspects so we're not going to fight with that, but we want to make our own targets so that we're able to do, we know what we need to do to get to where we need to go. You have about 30 seconds. 
So I understand that as nobody on can council can tell me that council spent any time at all deliberating this, that the mayor took it upon himself to put Maple Ridge, asked to put Maple Ridge in the position where things that happen tonight might not be able to happen because the mayor is supporting development and population increase, regardless of the wishes of the citizens or the powers of the councillor. That's what I hear. Thank you very much, sir. And that takes us to the end of question period. Thank you very much. Um, all right, now we're gonna move on to item 14. Uh, Mayor and Councillor uh, verbal reports. Uh, we're going to start off with Councillor Duick. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So I was going to uh, thank you for sharing the uh, BC Heritage Awards um, for, no, that's okay. I just, we recently had our meeting. No, that's great. You should be sharing that because it's wonderful news to see that Leanne and and James are being recognized for that. And more importantly, the Whitehead house that was, you know, in her family for, I'm sorry, I can't remember exactly the number of years, but a long time. And uh, Julie was very proud and was like very emotional to think that that they received that award. So that was awesome news. Uh, Heritage Commission is working on events planning for next year to coincide with our uh, Maple Ridge's 150th. So they've got some great ideas that they're looking at. So I'm, I'm looking forward to what we come up with on that. It'll uh, definitely be an exciting year next year between BC Summer Games and our, our 150th anniversary, which is awesome. I also, uh, it was seniors uh, uh, week last week. There was a number of events, so there's way too many to share, but I did go to a few of them. The uh, celebrating the seniors at Ridge Meadows, uh, we there were several of us that were there, and the drive-through coffee. I volunteered to work through that, and everybody were encouraged to come for coffee and cookies. And I think the key thing here is just recognizing our seniors and and supporting them for all the work that they do. They tend to be a, a high percentage of population that volunteer in our community, so that was really amazing. The um, other is the Metro Vancouver planning. Uh, I At my planning meeting on Friday, there was a number of recommendations that the planning committee recommended to the Metro board around the legislation to do with the provincial government saying there'd be four, ho four houses on a single family lot. And we had a really good dialogue and it really came down to it. It's hard to apply the same lens to every municipality. So a couple of municipalities said, you know, does this mean that, you know, our rural areas could potentially be, be developed? The potential of, of what does our infrastructure, our sewer, our water, our, our schools, our hospitals. So there were six recommendations. I won't go through them all given their other reports, but um, it is gonna come to the board. So the mayor will see that as well. So it was a good dialogue and it really wasn't about being opposition to the legislation, but more could the province really respect and understand that each municipality is a little bit different, you know, so Langley Township of Langley and Maple Ridge is completely different than Vancouver, for example. So um, I will leave it at that because it's a little distracting right now. So thank you very much. Yeah. Can we uh, close <laughs> the doors, please? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Do we and need to take a moment? Yeah, no, I'm good. Uh, I'll let others speak, but I just wanted to um, say that I appreciate that, you know, decisions that we make around this table are sometimes difficult. And I think the important thing is that we listen to one another and respect each other's opinions. And at the end of the day, we have to make decisions. So sometimes it's difficult and, and I appreciate that and appreciate you all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, uh, I'll, I'll wait till the end. I'll let everybody get their chance, but I will be giving an update on uh, the, the the fire that we had on the weekend, um, but I'll wait till the end of that. So, Councillor Carreras. Thank you. Um, 
Thank you, Councillor Dirk, for your comments. And there are some very passionate times around this table, but it's really great to be here and be able to have the privilege to, to have those discussions. So thank you for sharing that. I appreciate it. Um, oh my gosh, like Councillor Dirk, there's been so many things and I'm going to limit myself. I could go through a laundry list, but I'm going to limit myself to three. Uh, one is the arts. <laughs> And this was like a hard list to limit because there were so many amazing things over the last little while in our community. Um, arts Council. Uh, so we had an Arts Council. You will, if you're on their Facebook page, you will know that their last, uh, their latest, their next season has now been released. And it's pretty fantastic. If you haven't had an opportunity, I would encourage you to go check out the new season and tickets are on sale. There's also this amazing event happening. And of course, it's only happening the week that I'm actually out of town. So I can't see it. It's called um, Brule. B-U-R-U-L-L-E, sorry if I pronounced it incorrectly, and it's in in sort of in work with the city of Maple Ridge. It's in the park, in Memorial Peace Park, and it's this uh, performance. It's inside a dome, and it's done specifically right as the sun is starting to lower, and there's lights, and it looks incredible. So I would encourage everyone to go look and check out seats for that. I imagine it will sell out. Um, two, Pride. I can't go without talking about pride. Pride. Oh my goodness. My heart is so full from the pride event. And I want to thank um, Plea, the city of Maple Ridge, Uplan, and everybody else who played a part in organizing it. It was an absolutely stunning day. And it was amazing to see the amount of people and the amount of families that were coming out to support uh, inclusivity in our community and just different colors of flags and, and just a lot of love in that room and, or in that space. And I just, you know, love Love is love and a special shout out to you plan for working with the city to design our new pride crosswalk if you haven't checked it out it's crossing 224th where the old one is it is beautiful it is sparkling and man was it a celebration as we're all standing out there uh checking it out um and the last thing i want to report out on is uh you it's a you plan day um you plan which is a subcommittee of the youth planning committee is a group of pretty spectacular youth in our community they get together and they work really hard to just spread love and joy and great things in our community and engage more youth and this last weekend they had something called youth tank which was a spin-off of the show Shark Tank. And I just want to say a huge congratulations or thank you to, to you plan for your work. Thank you to the, um, the judges, uh, uh, Tyler uh, Westover, who's one of our own, was one of the judges, uh, Taryn Stevenson, who's very well known in the downtown community and the business that she owns, and Carter H Hugill, 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 who has actually been on Uplan for a number of years, and they had quite a tough job. And congratulations, third place for $500 was Alana Zhao with the Butter Toast Art Shop. She was an artist. Uh, second place for $1,500 was Ashley Dezira, uh for Grandma... Um, Harriet's, I need to read my writing here. Um, and it was a dip that she's created based on family recipe and she's marketing it and selling it. I didn't get to taste it, but the judges said it was pretty fantastic. Pretty awesome. Tyler's nodding his head. And the grand prize, $4,000. And again, this is investing in our youth, the entrepreneurs that are a younger age in our community. Uh, so it was it was a pretty cool event. Uh, $4,000 went to Chris and Nikki Evans for the banana bike. Uh, if you've ever been to Pitt Meadows Day, you will see them there. They're at different festivals. I believe they may have been at Pride as well. And they sell fr frozen bananas dipped in chocolate. Uh, so check them out. These are these are concepts that were designed by the young people in our community and had really great plans about marketing it. So thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Schiller. Thank you very much. Yes, also feel like the last few weeks have been a blur, uh, but just the, the highlights uh, that stand out for me. Uh, pride as well. It was just really cool to see this event grow um, from last year. I really want to acknowledge um, the work of our staff. Uh, the repainting of, of the crosswalk was just done so beautifully. I'm sure that was not an easy job. Um, and I saw so many staff working hard that day because there was such a great turnout. And, and I saw a lot of people uh, working hard to keep things going. It was a really positive and fun environment um, and just a great day. Uh, as as uh, deputy mayor, I also got to participate at the RCMP's 150th anniversary celebration. Um, again, really well attended, fun day for the community to learn more. You had the opportunity to tour the the uh, a fake crime scene in in the depot, and uh, that was a really neat event. Uh, and finally, I was able to participate in the unveiling of a mural. 
um, about the, the life cycle of the salmon. And this is at uh, Kanaka Creek uh, Regional Park. Uh, so this is a mural that was designed by local artists. There was a lot of school kids that were able to participate in the design and um, just really adds to the fish fence uh, location of the park. And as I get to visit different parts of this park and really sort of understand like what a, a large and significant uh, natural environment this is and how it really is enough area to be its own ecosystem. It's, it's, I'm really glad that we have this park uh, in our community and Metro Van did a great job organizing the event. And that's all for me. Thank you very much, Councillor Youssef. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and adding to many of the uh, same events that my colleagues and I have attended, uh, I was uh, actually, as well as yourself, uh, at the uh, blood drive on June 9th, and uh, it was my 51st donation. I believe you're eligible to donate again come October, and uh, the city might be holding a little bit of a, a drive, if I'm not mistaken. That was the mayor's challenge. Oh, right. That was the mayor's challenge. So a uh, challenge went out to all the mayors in the lower mainland to see who would uh, pick up the torch, so to speak. Um, that day, we found out so far, there were only two mayors that responded. So uh, I sent out a challenge to, uh, to my other colleagues to step it up. Thank you for that, sir. As, as a regular blood donor, I, I thoroughly appreciate that. And I believe this week is the uh, National Blood Donor Week. Yes. Uh, so shout out to all those blood donors out there and please do continue as more than ever blood is, is needed in our communities. And then on uh, also June 9th, I had the privilege of attending the 25th Courage to Come Back Awards uh, held by the uh, Coast Mental Health. Uh, and that was quite an, uh, an inspiring occasion and the stories are truly heartwarming and they they do speak testament to that recovery is possible and that people do come back and are able to uh to to recover their lives um then on june 10th i was lucky enough to participate in the purple angels uh event that was held here at memorial peace park to advocate against the stigma associated with dementia, Alzheimer's, and other age-related conditions, along with, of course, our stellar organizer, Myrna Norman, who is uh, to credit for bringing a wonderful event together to celebrate and to uh, to come together to, to recognize one another. So thank you, Mr. Chair. That's my update. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, my turn. Um, right. Oh, sorry. Councillor Doze, I keep forgetting you're up there. You're up in the clouds, sir. I know, I know I'm in the dark, eh? <laughs> Anyways, um, your worship, I just want to seize this opportunity to um, express my deepest gratitude to the um, whole people of Maple Ridge over the community spirit that I saw in the past 48 or so, or 72 hours, whatever. On Sunday, or so first of all, on Saturday, uh, I, I was out of town and uh, upon getting back to Vancouver here, uh, Maple Ridge, I saw in my mail some emails, people reacting to the fire incident, saying that, oh, they are willing to go and donate. Where is the donation uh, point and so on and so forth. As if that was not enough, I went to church on Sunday and sat in the church uh, when the pastor got up to say that uh, there was this fire incident in Maple Ridge and that uh, there are people who are now homeless looking for a place to live, that he will want some, uh, some small force who can afford to take them in. And uh, I did saw uh, some positive reactions to that. And uh, it really, melted my heart because personally I tell you that I know what it means for someone to be homeless or someone who used to have a home and suddenly to have none and the kind of communal spirit I saw within Maple Ridge over this incident 
give me a lot of hope. Irrespective of what we will have seen, you know, uh, uh, in the city, people uh, disagreeing, whichever way they disagreed or not, I want to still say that that H that is in humans is still very strong among the citizens of Maple Ridge. I can only say thank you, and I can only say please keep it up. Let us all remember that even as we speak in this forum, that those who were displaced as a result of the fire are still trying to wrap their heads around that. And the best we can do for them is to continue to pray and remember them. And I want to send this, use this opportunity to send a message to them that given what I have seen so far, I think that the entire population of Maple Ridge is solidly behind them. We have them in our thought. And I want to say thank you to each and every individual that has donated and that are still preparing to donate. Most importantly, uh, remembering that these people who are displaced are the unfortunate members of our family, great family of Maple Ridge. Again, I want to say thank you and how grateful and how honored I am to be in these chambers today uh, uh, serving the people of Maple Ridge. I can only say that uh, people should understand that the best is yet to come. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, my turn. Pride was great. The uh, uh, the U plan, uh, U think tank was fabulous, although I didn't get the chocolate covered banana, so I was disappointed with that. <laughs> um, all the events that we've all talked about were, were fantastic, of course. It's overshadowed by what happened uh, Friday night. Um, I was uh, I was there. I watched. I spoke with a lot of the folks. We were out there till about four in the morning, uh, watching a, the events unfold. And first and foremost, I've said this before. I want to thank our 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 fire services from all of uh, the region that that supported uh, Mission Pit Meadows, uh, the RCMP that came out. Uh, the TransLink that gave two buses to, they were there like unbelievably fast uh, to, to house uh, the unsheltered people who were just out in their, you know, their pajamas. Um, uh, uh, the uh, Royal Canadian Legion for opening their doors at midnight uh, and hosting a lot of the, uh, the families that were displaced, uh, BC Ambulance Services, I've never seen five ambulances parked one behind each other, ready to go. Thankfully, they were not needed. Um, the uh, the staff at Greg, uh, all the staff here uh, uh, that managed to get the Greg Moore Youth Center open at two o'clock in the morning. Uh, all the volunteers, uh, all the staff that were there, um, went into the Legion. Uh, spoke with a lot of folks that were uh, coming out from the fire. Some had their 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 cats. Some had their dogs, some had their kids. Um, they had, you know, they were given coffee and all that kind of uh, uh, comfort there. Um, it was, it was a, a tragic situation that could have been far worse. So the following day uh, went to uh, the Greg Moore Youth Center. And um, by the mid of the day, there was about 70 families overall. And they use the term 70 families. So it likely is what accounts to the about 200 people that were involved in this. So by Saturday night, everybody was housed either in a hotel or through friends or family, but they all had a hotel. Uh, and they were given vouchers for food. Um, the first 48 hours is always assessing. First is making sure that everybody's safe. And that's what exactly what would happen. Uh, all the emergency support services, uh, the fire department, everybody did what they were supposed to do. Um, the, in talking to some of the folks there, most had insurance. Uh, there were quite a few renters there that didn't have insurance and they're the ones who are likely going to struggle uh, over the next uh, uh, little while. Um, the community had reached out to all of us, you know, what can we do? How can we help? Donations, donations, donations. And we just want to take that step back. Uh, and we're requesting that they be cash donations. Unfortunately, 
they can't use a couch right now. What they need the most is the flexibility for them to be able to uh, buy stuff that they need, that they deem necessary for themselves. So there's been a lot of requests for Go, GoFundMe pages and, and so on and so forth. And I want to warn people that there's already signs of fake stuff out there. So what we're doing is, um, sorry, I didn't mention the Red Cross. The Red Cross has been the lead and they will continue to be. Uh, they, they, they're the ones who housed everybody and uh, they're the ones who've been giving vouchers uh, through their, their own funding mechanisms. So what we're doing, we're, we've arranged with a local group, we're just waiting for the final confirmation, who has the ability to collect funds and distribute them specifically for this incident. We didn't want any of the funds going into a general revenue or anything like that. So um, within the next couple of days, we should be able to announce who that is, which organization that is, they're a very trusted organization. Um, they, once we announce that, we'll, we'll put links, we'll pass that, well, we'll pass it around, uh, and they will make sure that it gets to the people that need it the most. The, the, the most important thing that I need to make sure that people know is if you know people who are involved and haven't registered with emergency support services, please get them to do so. Because we need to know who's in there. We don't want people falling through the cracks. Right, and I know that this community is ready to donate, and and stand up for uh, these folks. So, the emergency support services will have that list, and they will know who the money goes to, and they will make sure it gets to where it needs to go to. And it'll be, um, it's it's it, in this day and age, we have to make sure that it's all secure, and that's what we're doing right now. So. Um, I think that's, uh, that's, that's all the updates that I have. Uh, again, I want to thank everybody for their hard work on a tough day, on a tough night. But man, did they step up. Man, is this community stepping up. So I will end that there. And uh, thank you very much for all your updates. As we have uh, no further business, I will call the meeting adjourned. Thank you.